Economists are calling into question whether the Fed will be able to lower rates anytime soon after a third month of higher than expected inflation readings. Our next guest says that there is no room for a Fed cut in June or quite possibly this year. Joining us right now is former Council of Economic Advisors Chairman Jason Furman. He is a professor at Harvard's Kennedy School of Government. And uh, Jason, we were reading your tweets, because you were a pretty active tweeter yesterday. We were reading, or ex, exer, I should say. We were mm -hmm. reading your exes as you were doing this kind of real time on your reaction to what happened with the CPI number. I mean, you're of the opinion now that there's basically no way they can cut anytime soon. Yeah, look, Becky, I had allowed myself to get optimistic um, a couple months ago. But, you know, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. We've now had three months in a row of prints coming in above just about what everyone expected. Um, it's time to change the way we think about things going forward. Um, the market has done that for June, but you know continues to hold out hope. Um, I'd love the Fed to be in a position to cut rates later this year, um, but the data is just you know not close to being there at least yet. What's what's so concerning to you in the inflation numbers? Because we have a lot of people who will look at it and be able to argue it away. We just had uh, uh, Professor Siegel, who was on with us, Jeremy Siegel from UPenn, who was saying, look, a lot of this is backward looking. This is stuff that we knew was out there. These are late things that we know are going to be uh, after 12 to 15 months when you've got things like car insurance that go up. You have other people who, uh, a city analyst that we are, a city economist we had on yesterday who said, and it was still saying the same thing after the numbers, that, hey, it looks like the jobs market could be on the verge of the turnover if you look at small businesses. What, what do you see that they don't? You know, the first thing I'd say is you can take the inflation numbers and slice and dice them lots of different ways. And if what you do is take out everything that has unusually <laughs> large increases and assume all the decreases continue, um, you're always going to think inflation is going to get better. And that's a mistake I've seen people make over and over and over again. Um, the systematic ways of dropping the bad, uh, the extremes on both ends. And when you drop the extremes on both ends, um, the inflation picture, if anything, looks a little bit worse um, than what the headlines are. Um, the other thing is, you know, sure, the stuff is lagged, but core inflation on a three-month basis has gone from below three to 4.6% over the last six months. It's actually rising. And, you know, none of these lag stories give you why it should be rising. It should still be falling. Now, look, do I think we're at 4.5% inflation world? Absolutely not. What the Fed targets is lower than that. I don't think it's a moment for panic, but really not a moment for complacency either. Jason, we, we probably are guilty of talking about the inflation numbers a little bit too much strictly in the context of, therefore, what will the Fed do? Um, I think everyone agrees it's fine to wait for a potential Fed rate cut if it means that we have to let inflation uh, settle back a little bit more. It's more about the potential adverse uh, results, if there are going to be any, of the Fed staying tight. So what's your theory of the case? Do we actually have to have unemployment go up more? Do we have to have service, the service economy slow a lot more in order to get inflation down? Or uh, can we somehow just wait and have time take care of it? Yeah. So first of all, the thing to understand is even if the Fed doesn't move rates, financial conditions are easier now um, than they were a year ago. Now, they got a bit less easy yesterday in term, as the expectation for what the Fed was going to do shifts. And if that expectation shifts more, they'll tighten even more. Um, but financial conditions are just not especially tight right now. Um, in terms of what it will take for the last mile of inflation, I had long worried that the last mile of inflation would be the hardest. There's a lot of evidence for a nonlinearity in the disinflation process. Um, if it, that's the case, you would require um, a decent amount of unemployment to get inflation all the way to 2.0%. Um, this is where I turn dovish. I don't think the Fed needs to get to 2.0% inflation. Um, at a minimum, I think getting to something that rounds to 2% inflation would be just fine. 2.49 rounds to 2. If it's stabilized there, I don't think anyone would notice it. Um, I don't think um, they can tolerate a risk of inflation above 3, though, and that's the risk that we're facing right now.